and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another recommendations video. This video is going to be recommendations based on my book The Bridesmaid Survival Guide. Now if you didn't know, a couple of years ago I wrote my own YA romance centred around weddings but it is part of a series and I'm currently working on the sequel which is the Summer Job Survival Guide which hopefully will be finished and out later this year so more on that to come. But I'm using natural light and it keeps dipping and I'm so sorry. <laughs> but essentially I'm going to be recommending you romance and other genre books that I think have a similar vibe or if you like The Bridesmaid Survival Guide you might like those. Assuming you've read those ones then you can read this instead and also like this. It's reverse psychology. Does it count as reverse psychology if I tell you that's what I'm planning on doing? If you didn't know, The Bridesmaid Survival Guide is, like I said, a YA romance around a young girl called Reverie that is not her real name and that comes up later. But essentially her and a group of friends are kind of meandering through teenage love lives and love stories and two weeks before her aunt's wedding she gets dumped. She does not want to be around weddings, she does not want to be around people in love and yet here she is prepping for a wedding that she doesn't want to be part of. And there is, of course, a young guy there who keeps seeming to appear every time she's fully prepared to embarrass herself. So things happen, it's super cute. I've tried to build it around a kind of friendship dynamic first. So it's friends to lovers, set around a wedding, super cute, super romantic. And I think you'll really enjoy it if you enjoy other books on this list. The first and most obvious books I can recommend based off of The Bridesmaid's Survival Guide is The Worst Best Man and The Wedding Crusher, which are two romances centered around weddings. Who'd have seen that coming? So The Worst Best Man is the first book by Mia Sosa that I read and then this is a spin-off about the main character's sister or cousin. But essentially The Worst Best Man follows a young woman called Carolina who is a wedding planner and is spectacular at planning the most beautiful weddings. Except on the day of her wedding, her groom doesn't turn up. He sends her brother-in-law a text saying, I completely agree with what you said last night. I can't go through with it, the wedding's off. And it is then down to the best man, the brother-in-law, to tell her, which as you can imagine, <laughs> is very traumatic for them both. It then cuts to three years or a few months later, I can't remember, I think it's like three years later. She still hates him. She is still not married and she is devastated and they are then forced to work on a project together. Now I mentioned this in my D&D &D tag as having a very steamy, very oh, saucy scene that I think about a lot, but I really, really like the way this is a uh, enemies to friends to lovers type romance they do want the best for each other and i feel like the actual ex groom is a piece of shit so we love seeing that kind of dynamic and then the sequel follows like i said her cousin or sister or someone who finds out seconds before the wedding is about to take place that the groom is being cheated on by the bride and she basically calls an end to the wedding before it can happen, uh, pulls the groom aside, says you're being cheated on, except he has all of these things in his life set up because he's in a relationship and he has these like career ambition things, which I always find it really weird when career is like tied to being in a relationship, but I can completely believe in certain businesses that is necessary. Wild though. So she then has to step in and pretend to be his fiance, even though she's not. So it's a really, again, really, really fun, really steamy, really good time. And I just really, really love both of these. But I also love that they are very centered around weddings. They're very funny, they're very light. They're very gentle romances with all the classic tropes. And it is in that way that they are very similar to The Bridesmaid Survival Guide. Two more wedding centric books that are part of the same series. And the third one it has literally just been released is Dial A for Aunties and the sequel for Aunties at a Wedding. This is about a young girl called Jess who basically is a photographer, but she is part of her Malaysian family's wedding bundle. Her first aunt is a caterer. Her second aunt is a seamstress. Her third aunt is a beautician or her mom is a beautician. And then her fourth aunt is... Um, a singer and they basically do bundles for weddings which is fine except her mother decides to set her up on a blind date the night before one of their big big weddings and she doesn't really want to go she's not interested in a blind date and it ends horribly when he dies in a car accident because of her and I'm not going to get into spoilers as to how that happens it's wild it's so wild and it's like chapter two or three this happens insanity she obviously doesn't want to go to prison for murdering this guy panics, 
drives his car back to her parents' house, or back to her mum's house, introduce, and, and basically gets her aunts to help her cover up the body. Except because of shenanigans, the body somehow ends up at the wedding that they're working at, and so is the ex-love of her life, who she met at university, but broke up with because she believes there is a curse on all of the women in her family to remain single forever. So she breaks up with him before anything terrible can befall him and she's kind of proven right when this guy like dies on their first date so she's just like she's not willing to risk it but this is so so funny and considering this is a i think i think jesse santanto is american it has that real kind of british comedy slapstick style to it where it's just a comedy of errors things just keep going wrong and then in the sequel <laughs> where she's getting married <laughs> It continues and we have mafia elements and it's just, it's so funny. It's so funny. And again, it's a really light, gentle romance. These are probably more calm than rom-coms, but still so funny and so good and so well written that I'm genuinely so hyped for the third one. I'm so hyped for the third one. I got a net galley arc and I can't wait. So again, wedding based, would recommend, would recommend if you like Bridesmaids Fiber Guide. And then the final wedding specific recommendation that I'm going to make in comparison to Bridesmaids of Arbor Guides is not the same genre at all, at all, even a little bit, but it is so happy for you, which again is wedding centric, but this is a thriller that focuses around bridezillas and how rituals around getting married just get so out of hand. And it has this kind of like philanthropic, what's the word? What is the study of people? Anthropology? I think it's anthropology, my brain is blanking, but I think it has this real like anthropological style to it where the main character is almost going to this wedding studying what is happening. So again, it really kind of goes into a deep dive of these wedding rituals and the Hindu and this, that and the other. But then it has a really dark twist to it and it becomes a thriller and I'm not going to spoil any more than that because this is such a good time, but it's wild. Don't go in expecting this to blow you away. It's not like an incredible, I gave it like 3.5 to 4 stars. I had a great time with it and I think if you like, again, wedding centric books, you'll really, really like this. But this was just weird. In some places it was just weird. It wasn't quite like Hollow Places, Camp Damascus weird, but it was weird. It was really weird, but it was a good time. For the age category YA comparison, I wanna go with To All The Boys I Loved Before. Again, it has this kind of very gentle, very stylized romance style. Again, it's got the different tropes in it, such as fake boyfriend and friends to lovers, and they go on a trip together. And I feel like there were certain romances that inspired me to write A Bridesmaid Survivor Guide because they weren't good. And I thought, I don't enjoy these, can I write a YA romance that I would enjoy? And then I read To All The Boys I Love Before and I thought, there are ones out there that exist. And I think writing style wise, they are probably the most similar. Mine is more silly than this and it has a lot less BIPOC rep in it. But I think other than that, they're very, very similar. And I think the dynamics between the two characters as in like the love interest and the lead is very, very similar and very fun. Equally, the kind of group friend dynamic and the fact that the romance does not start in the best place. I wanna recommend Fence again. I feel like people talk about Heartstopper all the time and I feel like I could make similar comparisons to Heartstopper, but not enough people are talking about Fence. And I think maybe because it didn't get a Netflix series and it deserves one. Um, Fence is about a group of boys at a boarding school learning to be fencing champions. And it follows our main two characters who are Nicholas and Seji, who are clear rivals. One who is very skilled and trains a lot and one who has a natural talent, but not enough finesse and how they work together and work against each other. That dynamic is very similar to how my main two characters meet but it's mainly the friendship dynamic and the fact that each edition follows different elements of the friendship group is very so similar to how I want to build up my series so the next book isn't following Reverie from Bridesmaids Fiber Guide the second book will be following Melancholy as she goes and works her summer job so I liked that dynamic of fence and it definitely inspired Bridesmaids Fiber Guide equally with friendship dynamic I want to talk about Empress and Anaya this is a novella written by Candace Carter Williams who you will know from Queenie this is a really fun short freaky Friday style story which looks at two young girls who are really good friends but come from very different cultural backgrounds even though they are both girls of colour 
and I think it's really really interesting again seeing that dynamic seeing how the different how the friendship changes when they're put in each other's shoes is very similar to how I want the friendship dynamic to work with characters in my series and again has a very similar writing style for what I'm going for with book two so if you liked this and you like Bridesmaid Survival Guide you should look forward to book two. And one that I feel like encompasses everything I've said in the fact that it has the romance element, it has the big cast like friendship elements, it has that kind of fun com comedic element to it, has the girl constantly embarrassing herself element, is Laura Olympus. I feel like if you like Laura Olympus, you like a gentle, easy read romance with other things in it. I mean, I even go into story, uh, there is a storyline around fat phobia and kind of bullying and like slut shaming and stuff in my novel, which this also has a myriad of. So I feel like if you enjoyed any of those elements in Laura Olympus, you will enjoy Bridesmaid Survival Guide and vice versa. This is such a good graphic novel. It's chunky, don't get me wrong, and I'm so excited to work my way back through it because I've been accumulating the volumes knowing that at some point I'll be able to binge through everything that I've already read and then get new content. But it did start as a webtoon, so feel free to check it out there or order yourself a copy. And then the last book I want to recommend, purely because the writing style is in a kind of diary form, which is what book two in the Bridesmaid Survival Guide is going to follow, is Love is for Losers. I really, really like this. It has great neurodivergent rep. It has a sapphic romance in it. It is still YA and it still looks at really great contemporary themes. It has a really interesting narrative about what's happening with the main character's mum. But what I really, really liked about it, again, is the friendship dynamics. It's how communities come together which is something that's really important in my no in my novels as well so I, again I feel like it just picks off those key themes the Bridesmaid Survivor Guide also looks at and that's it that's my list of different books that if you liked those you will like Bridesmaid Survival Guide and if you like Bridesmaid Survival Guide you will like those so a real try this like that like this try that kind of scenario let me know in the comments down below have you actually read Bridesmaid Survival Guide yet would you like to because I will be offering a free copy to someone in the comments down below so if you would like a chance to win a free copy of the Bridesmaid Survival Guide leave a bouquet emoji and I'm going to put you into a hat and pick someone at random to give a free copy to this will be open to UK and internationally so don't worry if you're in the US etc I will post it out to you it might just take a bit longer but I am looking to offer a free copy to you put your comment down below make sure to treat yourself for something from waypoints because it supports me and my content check out the links down below because I have a patreon now and most importantly have a nice day